Welcome back. So we're talking about the Fourier series and how you can approximate arbitrary periodic continuous functions with a sum of sines and cosines of increasingly high frequency. Okay, so in this uh, short video lecture, we're going to code this up in Python, and we're going to use this example of this uh, triangular hat function. We're going to approximate this triangular hat function using a Fourier series in Python. Okay, and just to remind you, you can download all of these codes at databookuw.com, both in MATLAB and in Python, and we now have all of these codes on GitHub as well. Okay, this code, all of the Python codes uh, were, were uh, modified from MATLAB over to Python by Daniel Delewski also. Okay, so I thought what I would do to start is I would just remind you what the Fourier series is. So you can take your arbitrary function, this, this function is periodic uh, on a domain minus pi to pi. So you take your periodic function and we're going to approximate this periodic function by an infinite sum of cosines of higher frequencies and sines of higher frequencies. So a k cosine of k uh, times some frequency, bk times sine of k times some frequency. And as k increases from zero to one to two, higher and higher and higher, these cosine and sine waves become higher and higher and higher frequencies. And when you add up all infinitely many of these sines and cosines, you perfectly approximate this periodic continuous function. Okay, and just to remind you, you get these coefficients, these a k, b k's, by projecting or taking the inner product of your function, this function here, with these cosine and sine waves here. So the kth mode is the, sorry, the kth coefficient a k is the inner product of your function f with the kth cosine, and similarly for, for b k. Okay, and so now we're gonna, we're gonna walk through this code in Python and just kind of see how this looks when you, when you actually work, work through this. Okay. So the first thing that this code does is defines this domain um, from minus pi to pi with a certain uh, delta x of point 0.001, so it's a really fine delta x. And then we define this hat function. And the way I define this hat function is I take my domain and I chop it up into quarters. And the first and last quarter, the function is zero. And the middle, second, and middle, third quarter, we have a positive and a negative slope that meet in the middle to make this hat function. Okay, so that's one way to do it. I'm sure there's other ways of, of uh, building this hat function. But the really interesting part of the code is here where we actually compute uh, the Fourier series. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to add up from k equals 0 to 20. And I think this is really the important part here is that we're not ever actually going to add up all infinitely many uh, sines and cosines. What we're really going to do is we're going to truncate this at some smaller value um, r, where r might be 10 or 20 or 50 or something like that. So this is a lot like what we did in the singular value decomposition. We're going to approximate our function f with a finite number of modes of these sine and cosine modes. Okay, and that's what we're going to walk through here. We're going to go from k equals 1 to 2 to 3 all the way up to 20 and see how this approximation uh, gets better and better the more terms you add in this, in this series. Okay, good. And so uh, the, the way that we're going to do this is essentially um, here, this a naught is just our zeroth uh, mode for cosine of zero. And if you remember, cosine of zero is just uh, a constant function equal to one, okay? Um, when k equals, equals zero. So that's basically what is the, the average of this function, how, how offset should I, should I make this? And then in this 4k equals one to 20, we're going to take, compute the a k and b k coefficients by, by computing these inner products here. And the way we're doing this, I mean, this is actually exactly um, analogous to the integral form of the inner product that we're, we're used to seeing, except this is how you would compute it on data vectors. So we have defined this, this function f uh, on a discrete set of values x. So this is a vector f. And now we're going to build vectors, cosine, and sine. And we're going to compute the inner products of these by computing the dot products of those vectors. Uh, and we have to normalize by, by the delta x that we're using. Okay, so now we compute a k and b k. And for a given uh, number of modes, we just add up all of those sines and cosines in that proper proportion. Uh, and then we'll plot what the, what the output is. Okay, and that's what you see here. So in the background, uh, kind of in white, you can see the, uh, the hat function. 
And then you can see as you increasingly add higher and higher order, you get better and better approximations. So the first order approximation uh, is this kind of orange, uh, orange sinusoidal function here. And then very rapidly as you increase the order, you get closer and closer and closer to approximating this sharp peak. And also these oscillations uh, on the bottom get smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is actually doing a really nice job of approximating this function even with only 20, uh, 20 sines and cosines, okay? Uh, and of course you can reason through if you have an odd function or an even function whether or not some of these coefficients will be zero and others will not be zero. Um, so for example, in this even function, you're just gonna have cosines, um, so all of the b's should be zero, something like that, okay? And then something else you can do, and I think this is pretty nice, is that you can actually plot all of these amplitudes. So you can plot all of these AKs uh, or BKs here. I think here I'm only plotting my As because uh, my Bs are zero since this is a, um, an even function. So what we're gonna do is for the first uh, 100 modes, AK from K equals one to 100, we're gonna plot the amplitude of the cosine mode, uh, the, the cosine terms, and we're gonna plot what is the reconstruction error for that number of modes, okay? So that's what we have here. And so what we have here, um, the x-axis is number of modes from zero to 100, so you wanna increase the number of modes. In our example, I think we kept 20. And then what you have in the y-axis, this is the amplitude of AK, and on the second plot, this is the reconstruction error if I only kept the first 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on and so forth modes in my expansion. And this behaves exactly how you want it to behave. So this function, this error function, this reconstruction error on the bottom is monotonically decreasing as I increase my number of modes. And this is really nice. So if I have 19 modes and I can add one more, my approximation always gets a little bit better. If I add a 21st mode, it'll get a little bit better. So this error never starts to increase if I add more modes. This is monotonically decreasing, and this is exactly what you want out of um, an asymptotic approximation. You want this thing to get better and better and better the more and more terms you, you include in this series. Okay. Now I think this is also kind of interesting. Notice that these Fourier coefficients uh, have this weird kind of oscillatory behavior where they're relatively large, and then every fourth uh, mode, they go almost to zero. This is 10 to the minus 14. And I think that that must be because of some kind of symmetry in the function I chose, so that these cosines, every fourth cosine um, coefficient is zero. Okay, I think that must be something to do with the, the symmetry I chose of this particular uh, function. Okay, but the real message here is that as you increasing, as you increase the number of modes in this expansion, you only do better and better, and you actually do pretty a pretty good job of approximating this function even with as few as twenty modes. Okay, so you don't actually have to take the infinite approximation. Um, okay, good. So in a few lectures, we'll talk about what could go wrong, and then we'll talk about um, the discrete Fourier transform and how you can compute these things really, really rapidly. Okay, thank you.